Okay, in this video, I'm just getting loaded up. We're gonna head her down to look at, a, I think, a 2005 Cavalier that might have a suspected fuel pump issue. So, some of the things I'm taking with me right now, one thing, the battery's dead. So, if it's not a fuel pump issue, any code that would have been created will be gone. But, this is what I'm taking. This is a battery booster pack. I'm also taking battery cables just in case we need to boost it. A scan tool a multimeter and a fuel pressure tester i'm hoping with all that we should be able to hopefully figure it out and go forward from there watch the previous video oh yes my wipers are working just beautifully to be honest that's the fastest they've ever moved but let's head her down there and see what we can figure out all right just that lloyd's car right here was a 2005 cavalier yeah i think so yeah it died a little while ago he might suspect a fuel pump but when I put the um, gauge on it, there was fuel present there, but the battery's dead, so we're going to use my little battery booster, hook it up. We're going to turn the key forward and just confirm fuel pressure first, and then we'll take it from there. Watch, it'll start. Yeah, hey? watch, I'll find the keys soon. Oh, here they are. There? Okay. Let me hook up the battery pack. Okay, just turn the key forward, but don't start it. Yeah, okay. Is it forward? There you go. That's what it was. Just try to crank it over and see. Oh, wait. I'll try to hold it. Okay, try it. All right, well, we just went through a bunch of checks. You guys saw no fuel pressure. The fuel relay was clicking. We checked the fuse, fuel pump fuse. Fuel pump fuse is good, so most likely the fuel Definitely pump. Aliens. Yeah, aliens, eh? Definitely aliens. I'm pretty sure. Nice. <laughs> Well, I didn't get around to finishing this like I had hoped. Yesterday was checking out that car. Now, if and when he does bring it over here, we're going to troubleshoot it properly by going from the relay, seeing that we indeed got 12 volts present, and then seeing if the PCM is sending five volts to make the fuel pump turn on. And if that checks out, the fuse is already good. But we're also going to check to see if we have 12 volts present at the pump because those Cavaliers also have an issue with the wiring harness where it plugs into the harness on the fuel pump. Sometimes it gets corroded and the wire starts to burn up. So it may not be a fuel pump issue. We're going to have to investigate that. Like I said, if and when he brings it over, we'll do it. But what I got to do today is get ready for camp. I decided I'm going to take the Jeep because... For one, we got a storm coming in, and it's supposed to snow tonight and tomorrow. And a lot of my stuff is in totes, and if I put it in the back of my pickup because there's not enough room in the cab, everything's going to get all muddy and gross. So, the Jeep is my adventure vehicle, so the Jeep we're going to take out. I've had this installed in my Jeep for a while. This is the Tuffy's under the seat security drawer. I installed it when I did my trip to the Yukon. By far one of the most useful things I installed in my Jeep, especially if you want to put valuables and stuff in. Now I do have a locking glove box as well, I don't know if you guys remember that. It's right there and that's the Smitty built, but you could break into that pretty easy. people ask me about my OR fab rear tire carrier so I'm gonna go over quickly what I think about it and what I don't like about it the design itself is pretty good uh, one of the things I noticed when I downsized to a 31 inch tire I had to cut this piece off because I couldn't crank it in far enough now that being said with having a 33 inch tire it made the hinges sag so now when you go to close it you gotta lift it up and slide it into place now the jerry can holder works very well. The only problem I have with it, the design is good, but on the Jeep TJ, the window glass down here below doesn't have a very good seal, so I get gas fumes coming in the cab, which is kind of really annoying. And honestly, for the money, there's better ones on the market for cheaper and probably better. I would, no, I wouldn't buy this one again. I was gonna buy a lock for this, but a master lock was the same price as buying this. And this is a better cable. So I'll give it a whirl. 
I don't think it's gonna be outside that much anyway, so I'm not too worried about it getting weathered. Just when I'm out camping to get the generator locked up, whatever have you not, but I gotta head up to the grocery store, get fuel, get some things ready. Cause we're not too sure yet if we're going camping for one night or two, so gotta be prepared. Oh, this is where the fun's gonna begin. Stacking everything in for one or two days of camping. Oh, we're starting to fill up pretty darn quick here. Holy crap. I'm taking a bunch of craft beers as well, so wonder what kind of hangover that's gonna bring. I'm just double checking, make sure everything's good for the trip tomorrow. Antifreeze is good, washer fluid's good, engine oil's good, transmission I checked yesterday, so it's good. And a supercharger never gets boring, but it hurts in the pocketbook when you go to fill it up, that's for sure. I think for the most part I'm loaded up. I still gotta put some food in the cooler and ice. I still gotta put my drone camera equipment and some clothes. I think, yeah, that's pretty much got it for a couple days of backcountry camping. I got enough gas in the generator and plus up top, probably to run it to dry about two, maybe three times. So that should keep our battery charged over two days. Gotta bring my spot GPS. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. Hopefully it's not too cold, but I have my heater just in case. Here's the one last thing, Aubrey was over. So, so we went to Atmosphere to get some dehydrated food for camping and this McKinley backpack, 65 liter, was on sale for almost half price. Regularly 199, clearance 109. That's gonna come in handy for backcountry camping this year. But anyways, I think it's motherfucking beer time now. It's been a long day getting shit ready for tomorrow. All right, it's motherfucking beer time. I got some, some sort of Italian beer. The thing with this beer, have you guys ever tasted OV? I don't know if it's just a Canadian beer, if you get it in America. That's what this tastes like, OV. So basically, if somebody pissed in a bottle after drinking all night and they distilled the piss, that's what this would fucking taste like. But anyways, tomorrow's a big day. Head no fucking camping. Jeep is loaded up. Few last things to pack in the morning, like the drone and all that stuff, because I don't want the batteries in there overnight because it'll weaken them. And then head no for two days. One day, unless it's really shitty, so wish us luck. Motherfucking beer time. I'll see you guys on the road.